everyone, Susan Finch here with SLMA Radio, and today I am so excited. I have Erica Goldwater, who is the VP of Marketing for Annuitus. Erica, I am so excited to have you here. We've been working together on and off. I am happy to have you here to talk about social media overwhelm. And you go through it in your smaller companies because you are it, and you are doing it all. Then as you grow, hopefully, you begin to add a team. And it might be a part-time team, it might be a full-time team, it might be a team that all they do, it might be interns that you pay, um, it might be interns that you have with specialty areas that they're going to help you with. So Erica, you end up with a great team that you get to present your social media plan to. And you want to make sure that they are not going to look at you like you have three heads and freak <laughs> out with all the things you expect them to do. And you know, let, let's pretend as if they have never really engaged much in social media. What would be the first thing you would do to make help them not freak out? <laughs> well, it's hard not to do that, especially if, some, if a team is not fully comfortable with social media. But what I would do is present a plan and show the full strategy. And then, of course, that's a little bit overwhelming. So what you do is you take some baby steps. And you help educate them and make them feel comfortable with what the steps are and what they're needed, what they need to do, and how to implement those. You don't want to ever overwhelm someone, which is which is the challenge with social media. It's new to most people. Um, to do it effectively, you have to be um, consistent, have a, a regular cadence, have to establish some ground rules. So there's lots of advice out there, but for a team, I would sit down and say, look, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. This is how we'll do it, and I will show you how to do it and teach you how to do it. And so I think, you know, something that's very important is to build a little guidebook for your team to show them actually how to go about starting with engaging with social media and then how to move forward and progress because people very quickly will become experts. They feel comfortable. After that first couple of tweets, they feel much more comfortable and then they start, they start to go. Well, I'm glad you brought up Twitter. You know, that, to me, that's one of the easier ones to dip your toe in once you understand the logic of it. And a lot of people think Twitter is just shoving your stuff out, shoving your stuff out, shoving your stuff out. And just meeting a tweet quota is not social media engagement, and it doesn't really lessen your load. You know, tell me that you, you're not asking them to go in and say, oh, hi, guys, I want you to set up a Twitter account, a Pinterest account, an Instagram, a LinkedIn. How's that LinkedIn profile look at? Let's go on G+, and are you on Facebook? Do you usually, how do you decide how many everybody needs to do, and do you have them all do the same ones? <laughs> yes, you have everyone sign up for everything and do it all the time. That's really the key. No, good question. So what you have to do is think about the strategic goals of the organization first. I mean, for example, at Annuitus, we are not active on Pinterest. It's not where our buyers are. It's not where our customers are. So we're not active on Pinterest. If things change in the future and we switch gears and we find that more of our buyers are on Pinterest, absolutely we would engage in Pinterest. But it's not something that's effective for us right now. Before I would go into an organization or joining an organization, you need to take some good hard looks and understand what the buyer's interests are, what they care about, where they shop, where they read, where they do their research, what sort of events they attend, and then that will sort of give you an idea of where to focus in terms of social media. For most of us in B2B, LinkedIn is a pretty safe bet. Not everyone's involved in Google+, Plus, so you might have to evaluate that. Twitter is pretty significant for B2B, even more so today than a couple years ago. That's another good bet. Not everyone needs to look into, like I said, Pinterest. I mean, it's just not, it's not important for everyone. No, it isn't. I mean, it, yes, it gets indexed and things like that, but if you only have so much bandwidth for everybody, you do. You have to focus where your people are. And I'm wondering, um, right. you know, part of the overwhelm that... I know that I run into clients, it's like, I don't even know where to start is what they tell me. Like, I, I have nobody. I have, you know, 20 followers. I've tweeted three times. <laughs> Who do I follow? What am I supposed to do on there? And I think that's, you know, the biggest step to alleviating the overwhelm or the potential overwhelm is, like you were saying, the education process. So once you've established the two or three venues you're going to start with, or maybe just two, Picking, yeah. I highly recommend anybody that's leading this type of team, seek a professional or hire a professional or be the professional if you're comfortable enough to teach and coach your team 
what the purpose is and how other people give some examples how other people in your space use these venues either successfully exactly. or unsuccessfully because some really botch up they might have millions of followers but they're just pushing out gobbledygook and the engagement is full of typos and things that are not coherent or they're inside jokes that nobody gets and it's That's so it, it's not really speaking to your potential buyer and it's not building trust and that's the goal, right? It's engagement and trust, after all. That's what you want to do. You want to further your brand. You want to share information that's valuable to your customers. And if you're not doing that, please don't do it. Please, please don't start in social media. It's not. <laughs> it's just not. It's just not another venue for you to share more product information. You have to be giving value. It's it's a social dialogue, and um, it's it's in real time. So you also have to be dedicated to it. So don't start a social media campaign or even start thinking about a strategy if you don't have someone dedicated to it. If you don't have a team that's willing to back you up. Um, a lot of organizations see success in social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, whatever it is when they align um, their teams with um, the activity um, associated with social media, whether it's bonuses or what have you. There has to be a commitment to it. You can't have one tweet every month and one blog post or one you know, posting on Facebook. It has to be consistent. If you want people to follow you, you have to engage in conversation, and that means having a voice, having a corporate voice for your social hand, for your um, corporation that handle, and then, you know, when you have your team, encourage them to develop their own voice. It's after all, people buy from people, and people want to learn from people. So it's okay every now and then to not talk B two B marketing. Talk about your dog or your travels or something that interests you. You just went to Dreamforce in San Francisco. What was the restaurant that you went to, or who did you meet there? So you have to enable the personality to come out as well to be effective. Otherwise, if it's just pure business, people turn off. And that's that's not what we want. No, it isn't. And it, and it kind of jades everybody then towards right. continuing to try because they won't see success. And it's like, well, why did I do that? That was stupid. Um, years ago, a friend in Shotland, she likened Twitter to the cocktail party. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's where you go and you give small bits and it's small bits of personal mixed in with small bits of business, mixed in with small bits of truly listening and asking. You're trying to draw things out of others. It isn't just, you know, Absolutely. blah, 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 listen to me. You know, nobody likes that. That's the person at the cocktail party everybody just bails on. So, you know, what kind of guests would right. you be at a cocktail party? I don't care if you have a Diet Coke in your hand. Okay, folks, we're not saying you have to. <laughs> so, you know, I'll flip it and things. But... You know, what would what would be engaging? What would don't have to get too rowdy. Right? Yeah, don't get too rowdy. Um, but don't. You know, what would attract you to engage with somebody else when at a cocktail party? Because that is what we're basically doing digitally. Right. Right. And LinkedIn. You know, we liken that to the chamber, the old chamber of commerce meetings, the BNIs. Oh, well, sorry, I even said that. But some of those types of groups where it is all professionals. And we're there to learn from each other, draw from each other, boost each other's strengths up, boost each other's initiatives. So it isn't just, here's a press release. It's not your PR firm. LinkedIn is not a replacement for a PR firm. It's not your, your news venue that you can just shove out press releases to on a regular basis. It's, it is finding people that you want to support, that you believe in, that you trust, that you want to share their great stuff with others because when you do that you're establishing even more of a positive view of your company as being the booster rather than the you know the band the banner waiver exactly exactly and again it's that conversation I think one of the things that you you mentioned is important to bring up again there's also um, an aspect of being gracious in social media so if you read something that that's great or that interests you or that you think your followers or uh, would be um, interested in post it out there and then send thanks to the person who posted via Susan Finch found via Susan, Susan Finch everyone appreciates that that shows not only where you found your source and it's giving credit to, to Susan Finch if it came from you um, but it's also establishing your credibility you're not taking credit for something that you didn't find it's again sharing it's enabling it's empowering others and it's enabling that conversation so I think that's really important anybody who is just um, you know, you can retweet all the time. Retweeting has a, a great, great place and time. Um, but you also have to show 
add a little your own value. So you can't just retweet something, but you might want to add your insight to it or your input. Um, what does that mean for your readers? Um, so you know you you have to think about it. It's not. It's not something that you want to do without thinking. You can't just blindly set up retweets or, you know, you follow a few thought leaders in the space or people that you admire. Just don't always retweet their stuff. Think about it. Think about what they're saying and what it means to your readers and put your spin on it. They can read anybody else's stuff, but it's your insight that's valuable as well. And I see that too. You know, for those of you that are trying to avoid or meet your you know your marketing manager, your VP of marketing's expectations of your engagement. Right. We have reports. We know when you're lazy. <laughs> we can tell. I mean, we can tell exactly what you're doing. So yes. rather than just doing the lazy retweet, retweet. Oh yeah, I'm supporting them. Go read the article. Read the article. And from the article. And it will bite you if you don't read the article. By the way. Because every now and then there's a little zinger at the end, and you, yep. if you didn't read it, watch out. And it might even be bashing your own company. <laughs> exactly. You never know. I I've mean, you blindly, you wouldn't blindly post something, or you know, to share share anything. You wouldn't repeat idle gossip. You never know what you're retweeting or sharing if you don't read the article. Please read the article. Please read the article and tweet it from the article. Then mentioning if you can remember. Who first tweeted it for you? So, thanks right. for this. You know, abbreviate it all you want. Thank you, know, thx at and then the person, and then give one point that you loved about the article, something to show that you exactly. took the time, and you took the time to share it and to direct your folks, your audience, as to why they should bother reading it. That's right. And that that's res that's responsible retweeting. Um, <laughs> You know, it's it's like I watch people that will repin things on Pinterest, and I, I work with a lot of companies that use Pinterest because it is a microblog, and, and it creates our right. But I watch them blindly repin things, like, do you even know the source that came from? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't right. do that. <laughs> right. You have to be careful. You know, it's kind of... <laughs> It's not life or death, but it's a big responsibility, especially if you're doing it for a social handle, um, for your own company, if you're if you're the person responsible for social media for your company, whether you're doing it personally, it's a big responsibility. You know, the, uh, another important thing I, I think I would say is in developing that personal voice and, and understanding being gracious. Um, only make sure make sure that in your um, profile you identify who you work for, and then you say something like tweets are my own. Because you're not representing the company, you know this is you who you work for the company, but you have your own opinions as well. So it's important to always indicate who it is that you work for, because you may be promoting heavily your company, and if you don't, people will find that a little suspect. And again, you want to be transparent. It's about engaging an audience, and and lending some authority to what it is you're talking about, and being honest. You know, it's the sharing in an honest way. That's what this is about and, and helping people. And so if you're not truly honest and disclose where it is that you work or your affiliations, mm, it's not really best practices. And sooner or later, it's, it's probably not going to serve you very well. SLMA Live is an Internet radio broadcasting station dedicated to broadcasting programs in the business-to-business -business arena. Have you considered hosting your own Internet radio program? It's easier than a webinar has greater reach and listenership than a webinar. Internet radio is a content generation machine to reach at work listeners. For information about hosting your own program on slmalive.com, contact our producer, Jim Obermeyer, at 360-933-1259. I don't know if we've helped them to avoid social media overwhelm yet. I think we've actually kind of overwhelmed them. Um, <laughs> so with the second part of the show, let's cover some tactics for folks. Okay. Who've been assigned, you know, hey, you need to engage more or you will, you will be compensated if you engage more. How do we help them, you know, decide, because we know multitasking, especially for women, multitasking doesn't work, guys. <laughs> it's not effective. You need, to, you need to focus, and some people say, I never multitask, I do this task, and then I do this task, and then I do this task. Keep your head focused, and, you know, for me, it's about time management. Yeah. And I'm, 
and I kind of think of myself as a very disciplined person on time management. You know, I I wake up, I do my morning stuff for the family, then I have my 45 minutes to an hour that is for personal marketing and volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And then I dive into the rest. I take a break at lunch to eat, I do 15 minutes of social media to check in, and then I get back to work. And I don't do social media until the end of the day. If I'm on social all day, you know I'm having a slow day and not making any money. So, you know, there's a there's that balance. You know, I can spend all day yeah. chatting and going down that rabbit hole and just and there I am, you know. <laughs> so Erica, when somebody has been, you know, here you are, the VP, you come in, you, you have this great plan, you know it'll work because you've used it in other places before. <laughs> it's tested. And you have a team that some of them might be newbies, they don't have a lot of you you don't want to have to babysit them. Sure. And, and physically say, oh, and today you need to do this. You want to be able to give them a doable initiative, something that they can tackle without freaking out and be successful with it. Yeah. What would be your advice to that person receiving the plan from somebody like you? So I would start very simply, you know, a simple cadence, something as easy as three posts a week whether it's on um, you know, my top two sites, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Just start with three a week, and it only take a few seconds. Um, again, I would help our team understand who our circle is and who our, our audience is. Um, and I would All right, so you're saying to give them an easy, an easy list, you know, just three things. Baby so, steps. Baby steps. So your favorite, what are your favorite two venues for B2B? Uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you to add a third? Facebook, Google Plus. Okay, it depends on the company. Depends, yeah. Um, you know, the, the thing is you have to evaluate what's working for you. And so as a social media person, I would say um, let's look at it. Let's go for a month or even two weeks and see how we're doing, see what sort of results we're getting. Because at the end of the day, it's all about metrics and it's tracking and seeing what's effective and how we're engaging. And if something's not working, you look at the metrics and then you tweak it a little bit. If um, three posts a week isn't sufficient, you change it. If it's too much, you reduce it. Um, if we're not engaging with the right audience or people are not responding to our tweets or our posts, let's look at why. Let's look at all the tweets that we've, we've sent out during the last two weeks or the last period and evaluate. Were they too promotional? Were they not interesting? Were they simply retweets? You know, what's getting the most traction? And, and the other thing to think about is what time of day are you tweeting? Is it when our customers are online, our prospects are online, or is it when you're home at the end of the day and you're reading or sharing things? It all matters, and you have to evaluate what's working. Um, and the a, good news is with social media. What? Found, it's a tough thing sometimes to figure out, you know, who, when are your folks out there? When are they on? Right. And flooding the stream, or do you want to catch the tail end of that flood, or the beginning of the flood when they start? And that's a that in itself is you know a difficult thing to determine. But I find that when you have two or three people on the team to do that with you, even if like I said, even if they're part timers and their main focus is social media engagement, you know, articulate articulate social media engagement with sincerity, um, it helps because with they sincerity. have different types you know, different times a day. Right, right. And I think that's the key. Where, When are people engaging? When, when are the people that you want to engage with online? If it's at night, at the end of the day, after, you know, everybody's put their kids to bed and the offices are closed and everyone's taking the time to read sort of their, you know, nice to have content, that's a great time, you know, so figure out how to do that. But take a look at the metrics and see what the reports are saying, um, whether you use Hootsuite or Buffer, whatever it is. Um, pay attention to the reports, and, and that's not the personal, that's not the individuals that have to worry about that. So the social media manager, or I would do that um, to evaluate how things are working. You have to look at it from, um, you know, a broader perspective. It's not about necessarily what happened today. Um, it's what happens in a week. It's what happens in two weeks. And developing this whole strategy and, and looking at the long-term effects and, and gains. And if it's not working um, or if you want to change it in a little bit uh, in, a, in small ways, you just do so. It's very easy to do with social media. I found an interesting example. Um, my kids are off for school conferences, the whole district. Okay, So they're all off for school conferences. 
there are a few places around here. There's one called Sky High. So it's a trampoline kind of yeah. place. We went there. We wanted to take the kids yesterday because they were making us all crazy at 11 a.m. Well, Sky High decided not to open until 2. <sighs> and to me, if you are one of the, if you are the laser tag place, the sky, the jumpy place, and some of those yeah. places right here by the schools, you would want to be on the school calendar list to know and keep track of when they're going to be closed. Exactly. And get your social media ready to react to that and to help be top of mind and plan for that. Exactly. And to post on your Facebook, because that's where their folks are, post on Facebook and Twitter, hey, we're going to be open. But they had instead a group on that came out yesterday that required a two-hour prior reservation. Oh. It came out yesterday, the day that the parents are already trying to make arrangements for their kids and farm them out everywhere. Had it come out three days before, with the two-hour window, everybody could have planned it, and it could have been a bigger success. I get the two-hour window, so they have their staff there. Right. So plan that piece of it. But, you know, knowing your audience and their behaviors, that one thing could have made their day even more wildly successful. Absolutely. And a full day starting like a daycare time, they could have had kids there for eight hours paid right. at right. 10 bucks an hour. <laughs> and it, that goes back to the strategy too. I mean, social media is really a tactic. It's, it's not a strategy. It needs to be engaged in an overall demand gen strategy, but it's really just a tactic. So you have to not only figure out what makes sense for your business, but but how it integrates, whether it's part of a larger campaign. So, you know, if I was the, the jumpy house or the trampoline place, I would look at all the school calendars and figure out, you know, what, what when schools open, close, when is a storm likely coming? When is, you know, like that's that's your normal business. And so then let's say you have a promotion. It's, that's the group on angle, right? So you work it all in. So it's not your your strategy is not the group on. That's a tactic that's associated with your your campaign. I mean you have to think about all these different things. And then the value of social media is it's in real time, right? So you know what's happening from a school schedule, but if all of a sudden schools close because of poor weather or there's no electricity, but you have electricity, hey guys, guess what? We're still open. So you take advantage of the real time, but you also have to plan strategically. And that's yep. important for you to be as well. It is. It's important for me. I was, you know, just trying to give some kind of very easy illustration. <laughs> Hopefully that would, you know, resonate with some people but so for b2b folks you know if you are on a marketing team and this is your job to engage erica's biggest advice is baby steps you don't have to be a rock star when you start you can start with a few things and see how they're working for you see if people come back to you comment on what you post thank you for your engagement and be gracious Wherever you are, have your good manners, folks. Don't burp at the table. <laughs> be polite. How would you want to be treated? And it be can, authentic as well. Yeah. It is, yeah, I mean, people can read, you know, there's no emotion already most of the time. Emojis don't count. But there's very little emotion in social media. And so everything has to be able to be viewed in context by the people having the great days and by the people right. having the rough days. So be careful with your humor. It right. isn't always understood, nor is it well received and definitely not appreciated. Exactly. So you really need to know your audience and how well do they know you. If you're new to all this and you just started the company, <laughs> we don't need to see your stand-up routine in your social media. We <laughs> Nobody gets you yet. So stay sincere, stay gracious, make your mama proud. Right. You know, would, would they be happy seeing what you're posting? I mean, sometimes that's a test. I even ask my kids, would I want to see that? Would you want me to share that with your friends, parents? And as we're, exactly. as we're adults, it's the same thing. Those are the same checks. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't for, don't forget that you know it doesn't go away. It's important. It's you're representing yourself and your organization, and so always be on the up and up. Never bash customers. Share inside information. Um, talk about uh, competition. It's always you know the golden rule: do unto others. And so remember that you know be on your best behavior. It's, be it's a representation of yourself and your organization. And if you do it the right way, um, you'll see results. Yep, because it will come back to bite you, folks. 
It, you know, a, a nasty text that you think is private is a screen capture away from being shared with the world. Please, remember, please remember you cannot, ha you can't disappear. You can say, you know, with all those initiatives in Europe about disappearing off Google, good luck. No, it, be responsible. Be responsible. Be responsible. And yes. remember that you might not be at that firm forever, but you are still your own brand. And you need to carry your integrity and your reputation with you. And that will carry through. It will. It'll carry through to the next company that may want to have you on their team, but they may not because they have searched for your usernames and they've searched for your hashtags and they've seen the vile stuff that comes out of you sometimes, you hothead. So curb it. <laughs> right. Erica, how can people find you? I'm sure you can email me at annuitus, Erica Goldwater at annuitus.com, or my Twitter handle is Erica WG, E R I K A W G. I welcome any questions. Happy to help. All right. And we'll, we'll post her contact information in the show post as well. But you can find her at annuitus, and that's A N N. Go ahead. U I T A S. A S. So remember how to spell it A N N U I T A S and you can track her down there. But she knows what she's talking about, and we are so glad to have had you on the show. And folks, we hope we gave you a few tips and a few strategies and a little bit more information to help you be more successful as you partake in your company's social media message. Right. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. Thank you for having us, and thank you for joining us for another episode of SLMA Radio. You can find us online at slmaradio.com. And our organization is the Sales Lead Management Association. That is T H E S L M A dot com to find out everything that's going on as it relates to sales lead management. Thank you so much. Thank you.